Now it's time to go ahead and start testing the control loader. It's all installed um, and I've got multiple cameras set up so you guys can see how this whole thing works. So let's get started. My next task is that I have to go power on uh, the motors. You'll see that the motor X and motor Y offline says that if they're red, there's no power. So let me go handle that right now. Do this, we'll do this, and you should see that go green. Yeah, I heard the controller say I'm happy, which is always nice. So let's see what we got here. Well, that is super smooth. There's something catching right there. Might be a misalignment. I'm not sure. And you'll notice it doesn't center automatically. Uh, that's kind of a default behavior for this thing. Let's let the first order of business is see if I can't get that, that spring to reset. So we'll turn some spring on here and we'll go over here and we'll add some springs and we'll apply the settings. And I want to store the settings. So let's see what we've got. That's not good. Okay. I'm not sure what else I can try. Oh, the strength is nothing. So, okay. So let's turn up the spring to say 50%. And we'll try that and let's apply the settings. Nope. At this point, I am flummoxed. I think it's time to quit guessing and look at the documentation. Scary shit, I know. And yeah, that's my fancy, super special debugging seat because the ejection seat is not ready to go back in the cockpit or to go into the cockpit. And yeah, the instrument panel halves are removed. You probably can't see that. And Printed manual. Okay. You know, something tells me that those default values for the spring strength are not any good because of what I see in the manual. So my stupid mouse. Let's run that all the way up to 100%. And let's see what we get. Oh my God. That is, oh yeah. <laughs> I've got to use two hands with this thing. Oh my God. That is, uh, that's not what I expected at all. Holy cats, that's a lot of force. In fact, uh, let's see if I can't make this fish scale work and uh, we'll get an idea as to how much force that actually is. Because now I'm super curious. Okay, that's pounds, and I'll back out of the way. You probably won't be able to see that, but... Oh my god. So that's 16.89 pounds uh, back, almost to the stop. I hit the stop, and then I back off a little bit. Yeah. 16... 
don't know if you can see that. Here, here, you can see that. 16.89 pounds. Holy cow. Okay, so let's see what roll does to me. Okay, that's the stop. Let's back off the stop just a little bit. It's still 16 pounds, 14 pounds. Yeah. No, it looks to be 12. 11.96. That's still quite a bit. Wow, that's uh, that's interesting. But that's really cool. Um, so let me go back over here to my settings. And we'll turn that global gain all the way down and see what that does. Yeah, with the global gain off, there's nothing there. And that default friction, now that that's not doing anything, I'll push it all the way forward here. We'll see if we can't get a value for that. That's about four pounds, three or four pounds, something like that. 3.9, four pounds. So that's basically unloaded. Okay, so the master gain has to be up. Come on, mouse pointer. I'll apply that. And you can tell as soon as I applied it, the stick stood right up. That is a lot. I mean, that's a lot. It's, and interestingly enough, at maximum, that's still not as much as the, uh, the original control loading system in the jet could deliver. Um, if memory is correct, it's about, uh, I think it's 2.19 pounds per G load on the aircraft above a certain default threshold, which I think is about three or four pounds uh, to, to break out of the center, um, which means at 9G, you're still probably less than 20 pounds. And at 16 pounds, um, with everything turned up, man, that's close enough for me. Um, I suspect if I have a chat with some of the BMS guys, let's see what that does. Um, we can maybe come up with something to get that set up to be accurate in as much as uh, my control loading matches the G loading in the F-15 in the game. This is really cool. So let's see what happens if I turn off, um, what was it I was going to, adapt, adaptive recentering. Let's turn that It doesn't come back to center all the time. And I think that's just because of hysteresis in the system. Uh, because of the, the belts and everything else. So let's try this again. And it try and it, yeah, see it slowly sneaks up on that center point when I let go of it. There's two hands, do a little stick stirring here. Kind of curious to see what uh, <coughs> the temperatures are and the uh, the voltages and the power consumption is going to be. And it looks like it's only pulling, I think, three or four amps the whole way here. Interesting. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll go back to settings and we'll go to auto calibrate. 
We'll go ahead and we'll do the master key will be set to zero. So we click OK. And now we do our and turn auto calibrate off. And then apply settings. <laughs> <laughs> That's never going to get old, the fact that it'll, it'll move by itself. And you can see the, the little bit of rattle in here. And that's because I only have one bolt um, holding the SFS box in, and it's not tight. It's just a finger tightened the nut is all. Um, and I think I'm also a little under spec in the, uh, the diameter of the post that I made that fits into the stick base. Um, okay, so we have good force feedback, or at least control loading. Um, wow, that is just something else as to how, how tight that is. I'm not going to complain, though. That's, uh, that's some pretty awesome stuff. Let's pull, let's pull that back to, say, there. And yeah, unless the spring is at 100%, it doesn't seem to do anything. Well, it looks like it's going to try to slowly figure its way back out. But now I got a squeak, and it's in my pitch axis. Yeah, I'll have to talk to the the developer about this in order to see if I can't get the uh, uh, the spring force uh, to work. Oh, I forgot to hit apply. Uh, to get the spring force to work, uh, but not be so springy that after flying for two hours, my right arm will be noticeably larger than my left. Um, which, not being a fighter pilot, has implications I'd rather not address. <laughs> okay, so we have that done. So let's do some switch testing. Um, this cable here is the new SFS cable that I built. Oh wow, it's probably been uh, eight years, maybe 10 years, uh, and has never been field tested. Um, the cable that links the SFS box to the uh, VP4 shift register controller has not been tested. So. Now I need to go through and make sure that everything works. Uh, the interconnect between, or the DB25 connector that I used uh, has been tested, connected to the VP force thing. So I know that all of the, the signals from that connector going into the VP force controller will register button presses. Um, because of how I wired things, you know, you know, the trigger switch will not be number one. The camera switch will not be number two, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's just kind of all over the map. But since I know what uh, wire goes to what uh, switch, um, I'll be able to easily map that out. So let's start with the gun camera, which is 16. And then trigger is 13. So we got good there. Weapon release is 17. Um, I don't recall what that is, but we'll push down on that. That's good. We'll push forward. We'll pull back. That's number one. Okay, that's good. A castle in is 14. Up. Oop. Up. Mm, we don't have anything on up, so okay. Um, left, four. Right, six. Down is five. Okay. A trim switch in. Well, it's 15, but 
That switch might need a little bit of love because it's kind of intermittent. Um, down, up, left, right. Okay, so that's good. And the AP disconnect down here, nothing. Okay, so, whoops, got one more to check. And that is, that's AP disconnect. This is nose wheel steering. Okay, so it looks like I have two switches that I need to be testing. And uh, I will need to go from uh, the grip to the SFS box wiring to this cable and then to the secondary cable uh, to make sure that I'm covering all my bases. Uh, I'm fortunate in that I actually have a disassembled F18 grip. So if this castle switch is in fact bad or this other switch is in fact bad, um, I have replacements that won't cost me hundreds of dollars. Uh, if I do have to replace them, um, yeah, Auto thinks a lot of their aircraft switches and they charge a, cons uh, a commensurate amount for them. So I have that to look forward to if, uh, if worse comes to worst and the F-18 switches are bad too. At any rate, on that note, I am going to finish this video up. Um, I greatly appreciate the time that you folks spent to watch this. And uh, I would love to hear any comments that you have on this video or any of the other videos that I have. And I hate to say it, but like and subscribe. Bye.